disk of the sun. Now, what is so challenging about it? It is because the sun's corona is a million times fainter than the disk of the sun. So you have to not see the disk of the sun, but see only the corona. So this instrument is very difficult to make, challenging, but it is made. Now it's going to the orbit. Now what we plan to study using this instrument is the corona, its dynamics. Through this emission line, you can actually measure the velocity by a simple physics called Doppler effect. So you can measure the velocity, you can measure how much matter is moving, and eventually how that matter will come to the Earth and the helios heliosphere. So it's overall this instrument, along with the others, of course, the other PI will also be explaining about it. So these holistically will give you a lot of information regarding not only the sun, but also the heliosphere. Thank you. That was very interesting, Doctor. Thank you very much. And uh, now we'll move on to Durgesh Tripathi, Dr. Durgesh Tripathi. You are the PI of the pay suit low, uh, for the payload suit. How is that different from other telescopes like Hubble or James Webb? And what are you going to investigate using this? Yeah, so good afternoon. My wife is going to Mumbai uh, because I'm still in the awe of the, of the launch and one of the payload is gone there. So um, essentially, uh, JWST, which is James Webb Telescope and the Hubble Telescope, they are going to look at the universe, different objects, galaxies, star formation, and, and other objects you see in the universe. Whereas uh, when we talk about it, uh, L1, it is going to look at one particular object, which is our sun. Um, and it's also uh, kept on the other side of the Sun-Earth line at the L1 point, whereas the James Webb Telescope went on the other side of the Earth, which is uh, at the L2 point. Now, uh, the scientific difference, of course, they, they also observe in ultraviolet, but uh, um, uh, Aditya, as uh, Professor Anil Bharadwaj and also Professor Anna Purnishubhman alluded to, these are multi-wavelength uh, 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 satellite, and they will be observing all across the, um, the electromagnetic spectrum. In particular, SUIT is going to be looking at the ultraviolet radiation uh, in 2000 to 4000 angstrom, if that matters to you, uh, um, uh, emits from the lower and the middle atmosphere of the sun. And what we want to look at that how, in general, the sun's atmosphere is coupled by looking at the observations at various height, and uh, how actually this radiation is coming and uh, getting absorbed in the uh, Earth atmosphere and what kind of effect it can have in the chemistry of ozone and oxygen, for example, and also these explosions which are happening, how much radiation they are creating and how much effect it would, might have. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. And now we move on to Sh Dr. Satish Thampi. You are connected with the payload PAPA. Already the plasma particles on the moon are analyzed. How do you analyze plasma particles in the sun? And what is the imp importance of solar winds and how does it impact? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for giving uh, opportunity to, to come into this room. Uh, as my colleagues, they mentioned actually about the sun. Today we have the auspicious day where actually we are going to our own star, that is the sun. Just I want to tell to the viewers that actually the sun, which is our hero basically in the solar system. If you look into the mass of the solar system, 99% of the mass of the solar system is occupied by sun. And also this sun is plasma. Now, when we are talking about the heliosphere, actually, with this, all our planets are engulfed in that thing. You know, we have been studying in decades, maybe in centuries, we have been studying about the sun. But what we were lacking, actually, a comprehensive approach, because sun is giving its energy mainly in three forms. The first, first one is the radiation, actually, my colleagues already talked about, which we can do remotely from our ground. But the plasma, basically, we are talking about the solar wind, what, what we call the space plasma, as well as the magnetic field. This can be only studied by in situ. If we study all this radiation, particles and field, then only we will get a full comprehensive understanding of the sun. Now, we are, we are getting the first space based observatory from the Indian soil and we are making this opportunity. And of course, I am thankful to ISRO and all my colleagues and my teammates from VSSC and all my scientific colleagues here. This is the opportunity we got actually, we are make, trying to make, understand actually all the three things, radiation, particles and field. Already they mentioned about the radiation, now uh, Dr. Vivian will be talking about field. Just I want to emphasize on the particles. Plus That's why we named it as PAPA. PAPA means plasma analyzer package for Aditya. This is developed by Space Physics Laboratory in support of Vikram Sarabhai Space Center. And now this instrument has two components. If you look at the solar wind, basically it comprises of 95% protons, then alpha particles roughly around 4 to 5%, then equal number of electrons also. So our PAPA is a comprehensive package measuring both ions and the electrons. Mm. Now these electrons, like already our uh, colleagues they mentioned actually the major transient events like coronal mass ejection, that's a huge mass which is coming out of sun, basically it's a plasma. 
basically when we are talking about solar and basically nothing but it's the extension of the corona only that that must have now these particles actually they only actually modulate the energy and momentum of the planetary atmospheres see we we when then sun is quiet like it he is not aggressive sun is what we are getting the ambient solar wind so if you look into that thing actually that one actually gives uh, what, what what we call the about the uh, the interactions what we call the normal routine phenomenon which is happening on there but when there is sun is angry so it gives like in a CME, CA or all these sort of events are happening. That is really going to affect our planets. That is what we call the space weather. Now our intention is to understand, the first of all actually what this effects, basically the solar wind in the ambient condition as well as during this transient universe, how this solar wind behaves and also how this coronal mass ejections which is passing through different planets, how actually what are the different things like what we call about the microphysics, macrophysics and the mesophysics of that things that we want to understand. Mm -hmm. So one thing is actually it's a physics subject to understand because we are getting an ideal point, Lagrangian point, which is in the sun earth uh, plane mm -hmm. and we'll be seeing the events exactly there. Second thing is actually we can definitely monitor the parameters. Okay, what actually Papa will measure the electrons and ions, we will be getting energy, direction and angular information, uh, sorry, uh, mass information. Mm -hmm. So if we know these things related to electrons, as, uh, electrons we don't want in the mass, but for the ions we are getting the mass information. Okay. Coupling the, all this information actually what we can do is we can derive the plasma moments. Mm -hmm. That will be definitely going to the modeling part, actually dynamics part, and that will definitely go into tell about the effect of the space weather effects. Ah, yes. So in due course actually, with the L1, in addition to other L5 missions, we will be able to tell. This is the importance of the plasma missions. Ah, yes. That actually, yes. uh, sorry, as you mentioned yes. actually earlier, with the lunar mission we achieved, we tried to understand mm -hmm. that thing really it changed this plasma studies change the perspective of the moon now all they will give more uh, detail about ah, yes. thank you ah, thank you sir uh, th thank you so much for that sir and now we move on to dr dipankar Banerjee. so you you manage the beautiful solar observatory at nainital how do you think the studies of heliophysics will supplement aditya l1 can can you tell us something about the history of solar observatories in india that's right. Uh, India has a long tradition of looking at the sun from the ground. In fact, uh, from Kodaikanal Observatory, we have been observing the sun for more than 100 years. And also we have beautiful, you know, a solar observatory at Udaipur, in the lakeside and at Nainital. We are looking at the sun. But there are limitations of looking at the sun from the ground because you can only see the lower atmosphere of the sun. So this was very, very important that we could go to the space. And this is a fantastic opportunity. Originally, more than 10 years back, we were only looking at a small satellite program. And then Professor U. R. Rao suddenly came up with this idea, why are we taking baby steps? We should think big. We should go to much longer distance. And then this opportunity came in, the Lagrangian one mission, the entire country, all the scientific institution got very much highly motivated. There are multiple payloads were then proposed. So eventually now we have a Lagrangian one observatory class mission. And as you heard from my colleagues, that it is a multi-wavelength observatory. So that's very important to have the shorter wavelength coverage from the space. And in addition, the ground-based observations are also important. So a combination of the ground-based telescope and the space-based platform is very, very important. And since you asked about the question about the, you know, how Aditya in the overall heliophysics uh, research uh, uh, within the international scenario, we only have three uh, an spacecraft around Lagrangian one point, from primarily from NASA and ESA. So I think again, this is a, a fantastic achievement from India. If you could reach L1 uh, with the full observatory class mission, it will really open a new window altogether. So I think this is a great opportunity and we are all looking forward. And as I mentioned, probably we'll request that, you know, a better ground-based facility. We have already projected a National Large Solar Telescope project from the ground. I think this is now high time. We have a very nice uh, ground-based telescope also to complement the capabilities of Aditya L1. Thank you. 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 Thank you.